Today, we are going to look at section 7.3, which is on trigometric integrals, or I'm going to call it trig integration. Now, I'm just going to let you know that next week, maybe, there we go. Next week, when we do section 7.4, it's called trig substitution. And I'm just going to let you know right now, this, the, the 7.4, I think, is actually the cooler of the two. It's really, when you see it, it's just kind of mind-blowing. Because we're going to do trig integration. I'm just going to forewarn you, this is kind of ugly. But after you do it a little bit, you'll find it's not, it's not too difficult. So uh, I think i got three examples that I'm going to do. Or no, four. Maybe there's four. Anyways. So our goal is to solve trigonometric integrals involving powers of sine and cosine. So that's one of the examples. And I think, actually, I do, I think, two of these. Then we're going to do one that involves powers of secant and tangent. That one's a little bit harder. We'll just do one of those, even though it's actually not too bad once you see it. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at products involving sine and cosine using some of the um, trig identities that you probably have forgotten or maybe were never taught. So anyways, now I'm not going to read through all of these guidelines. These are on my notes if you want to look at them. Um, let's just look at an example right out of the gate, okay? So let's say you want to integrate cosine to the third power of theta. Now, you might be tempted to think, well, I'm just going to do a u sub. So I'm going to let u equal cosine theta. Well, then d would be what? Will be negative sine theta d theta, right? Do you see a problem? There's no sign. So, I mean, what are we, this isn't going to work. So traditional u sub is not going to work. So what we're going to do, I'm going to erase everything I have written here so far. We're going to do something a little different. And I'm going to refer to something that I hope that you guys remember. Let's see if you do. What is sine squared x plus cosine squared x? It's 1. You guys knew that, right? Okay. So would you agree then that we could say that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x? Yeah. That's what we're going to use in this problem. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use this information with this integral. So I'm going to say that the integral of cosine 3, oops, cosine 3 theta d theta could be thought of as the integral of cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. And my hope is, is that you can see that from here, I can put 1 minus sine squared theta in there, which, again, at this point, you may not quite understand why we would do that, but let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be the integral of 1 minus sine squared theta, and then cosine theta d theta. Now, here's the thing. Oops. If I let u equal sine theta, what's du? Cosine theta d theta. And by the way, that's exactly what we have right there. Now we're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to think of this. And in fact, we're going to literally write it this way, and I'll do it in a different color. Is This is now going to become the integral of 1 minus, and instead of sine squared, we're going to write u squared, and then I can now replace this with the u. By the way, you'd agree that that's a much easier looking interval. So we're doing u sub, but we're doing with tr trigonometry stuff. What's the integral of 1? Well, it'll just be u. What's the integral of u squared? u cubed over 3, and then don't forget the plus c. And then for my last step, I've got to I've got to replace the u's with sine. So my final answer here is going to be let's let's do it in red, or let's do it back in purple. Uh, is going to be the sine of theta minus the sine cubed theta over three plus c. Okay. Did that seem hard or did that seem okay? That seems okay. 
So again, this, this up here is kind of the identity that we kind of use to get us to where we need to go. All right. So let's look at a little bit harder one. Now, let me go back actually to this one. Here I did an example of a cosine to an odd power that's positive, right? Here I'm going to do a sine that's to an odd power and positive. Oh, and I should note, if you've already watched my video, the examples I did in my video are different than these examples. I tried to make sure the examples I do in class are different than the ones that I do in my video so that you guys get lots of exposure if you need it. Okay? Again, I'm going to do the same thing. This one I'm going to do with a little bit of a twist. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do it and then see if you guys can kind of uh, make sense of this. So I'm going to write this one like this. Now, keep in mind, everything up here, this is a product, right? This is five sine things being multiplied together times the square root of cosine, right? Now, no, no, I have two factors of sine here, two factors of sine here, and then another factor of sine over here. And I'm just going to kind of let you know in advance, you can probably guess why I'm doing this. But watch and see what happens. Now, what can I put in for sine squared? One minus cosine. You got it. So now this is going to become... There we go, equal sign. Uh, so this is going to be, um, let's see, 1 minus cosine squared x times 1 minus cosine squared x times cosine x to the half power. And then I'll write this even in a different color here now. I'm going to write this part in a different color because this is the part, this is going to be my du. Okay. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that now. Let's do it in green. I'm going to let you, in this example, be cosine theta or cosine x. Now, be careful. What's du? It was sine. It'd be negative sine x, right? So I've got to put a negative in front of the du, right? Is remember when we did that? The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So I got to make sure I account for that negative over here with the du. Now notice my purple thing matches up with my green thing right here. And then every, all these cosines are going to change to u's, right? So let's go ahead now and convert that and we'll, we'll do it in, um, let's just go, let's keep it over right here. So this is going to be the integral of 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared times u to the one half d. This is our integral now. Again, it looks pretty ugly, doesn't it? It's certainly not like you don't look at that thing, oh wow, that's an easy one, but it's doable. And so now we gotta we gotta multiply all this stuff out. Okay. And I might just do this on the chalkboard over here just to make sure that I don't make any careless mistakes. I want to make sure we get the right answer here. So we've got to do one minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. So that'd be 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to multiply that by u to the 1 half. So that'd be u to the 1 half minus 2u to the 5 halves, because you'd have to do, this would be 4 over 2, right? 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2 would be 5 over 2. Um, plus... And then that'd be u to the 9 halves, 9 over 2. That's exactly right. Okay. Ooh, and I made a mistake already. Do you guys see the mistake? Need that negative, so let's not forget that negative. Let's throw that guy in there. Boom. In fact, and let's go ahead and get rid of that negative now. Since there's this negative here, if I just flip all the signs of this, then the negative goes away. So this is now going to become the integral of negative u to the one half uh, du uh, plus integral of two u to the five halves du. I'm kind of breaking this up into parts here. 
Oop, that's going to be minus as well, right? Minus u to the 9 halves. So now we're just going to use our power rule for integration. And I guess this negative here could be out in the front, but whatever. Okay, so we're almost there. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave. This negative is there. That's positive, And this negative is here. Okay. We good? We're good. Okay, so when we integrate u to the 1 half, we're going to get u to the 3 halves. And then you got to multiply it by 2 thirds. And then don't forget the negative from there. Same thing here, except we got a 2 factor. So we're going to get 2, and then the integral of u to the 5 halves would be u to the, I think it's the 7 halves, and then you have to multiply it by 2 sevenths. Minus, and then u to the 11 halves, right? So then that'd be 2 elevenths, u to the 11 halves. And then don't forget the plus c. And now we just got to convert all of this to what? What's that? Okay, so this is going to be negative 2 thirds. And then I'm going to write this as cosine x to the 3 halves. That's 3 halves. Plus 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be 4 sevenths. And then cosine to the 7 halves minus 2 elevenths cosine x to the 11 halves, and then plus c. Woo! So what I did here, and I know this is ridiculous, is on the previous slide I did kind of an easy one, cosine to the third. This one was a, a hot mess. But here's the thing. It's actually doable, but it definitely took some effort. Definitely took some effort. So these are two examples of how we can find guidelines for finding powers of sine and cosine. So you're basic. Oh, and I, I need to mention one other thing. I'll mention it in a second. Let's go ahead and talk about secant tangent. There's something else I want to mention, but I want to hold off on. So here's the gist on this one. In fact, again, I'm not going to read through this. You can look at this. Um, there's more stuff here. I want to get to this example. It looks really bad, doesn't it? Now I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with the same thing we just talked about in the first problem, right? Remember when I wrote sine x squared plus cosine squared x equals one? If I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could divide all of these things by cosine squared x, couldn't I? And what you get then after you do this, well, what's sine over cosine? That's tangent squared x. And then what's cosine over cosine? And then over here, you're going to get secant squared x. By the way, this is another trig identity that students don't remember. And I don't even try to remember because I always just use the one I know, which is sine squared cosine squared one. So watch how I do this one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the integral of tangent cube beta times secant squared beta times another secant squared beta d beta. Just trust me, OK, for a second. So I had four factors of secant squared, so I just wrote secant squared, secant squared for some reason. But what can I replace in for that secant squared? Okay, so that's going to give me the integral of tangent cubed beta times um, tangent squared beta plus 1. And now I'm going to do this in a different color, and I'm going to write secant squared beta d beta. Does anyone happen to remember what the derivative of tangent is? Is that secant x tangent? It's secant squared. squared. Look at what I wrote in purple. And guess what everything else is? Tangents. 
Now we can do our substitution that we want. I'll do it in black here. So now I can say let u equal tangent beta and du is equal to secant squared beta d beta, which is why I left that purple thing the way I did. And now this problem is going to become a lot easier. Integral of u cubed times u squared plus 1 du. Again, not an easy looking integral, but a heck of a lot better than what we had in the first place. Agreed? In fact, let's clean that up a little bit. That would become the integral of u to the fifth plus u cubed du. And I bet you all of us can do that. What is the integral of u to the fifth? U, six over six. u to the six over six. u to the third is integral. u to the fourth over four. u to the four over four plus c. And then guess what we change u to? Tangent. And that's the answer. So I'll go back to red here. And I'm going to write my final answer here which is going to be the tangent to the sixth power beta, six over six, plus tangent to the fourth power beta over four plus c. Okay, now I want to, this, I was going to say this a second ago, but I saved it specifically for this, this example. I'm going to write something else here, and I'd like you to add it to your notes. And I'm going to add this, and I want to mention this because I'm, I'm, you may not have this happen to you, but you might. Guess what's true about that answer in turquoise? That's incorrect. <laughs> it is the same answer. And I'm forewarning you for a reason. If you do Wolfram Alpha to check your answers, be very careful. This is also a solution to this integral. Here's what you got to keep in mind. You know how these things differ by a constant? That oh, constant, yeah. Okay. And by the way, this answer would have been arrived at when they let u equal secant. And by the way, if u is secant, what would du be? Secant tangent. So you can do this problem two different ways. I tried to show you what I thought was the easiest way, but be careful. You may do it a little bit different way and your answer may be completely correct. But then you compare answers with someone else or you go to Wolfram Alpha and then you're like, oh, what did I do wrong? You maybe didn't do anything wrong. Yes. Is it, um, so will the trigger, like the trig, like say if it's sine and cosine, will it always be interchangeable because the constant will be different? Yeah, I don't want to say that's always true, but a lot of times, with particularly with the secants and the tangents, it's true. And I've even seen it sometimes with the cosines and the sines. Okay. okay. Now, I'll be honest, that first example I did, I don't know that you would do that one with, with them switched around. Um, but there, if it, depending on the powers, you could. Okay. Does it, do you, are you getting kind of a flavor for this? It's still U sub, but we're kind of using those trig identities. So, okay, we have one more thing to talk about, <clears throat> and that is product rules that you probably don't remember or you never knew. Now, I don't know if you guys remember back in pre-calc, if you guys ever did the double angle formulas, or the half angle formulas. Sounds familiar. Okay, right? so you did them a long time ago. You probably spent like a week on them, and then you probably never talked about them. Anyways, so here are some formulas that are helpful. By the way, notice there's no integrals involved in this. This is trig. This is pre-calc stuff, okay? For example, if I have the sine of, let's just make up some numbers, let's say 7x times the sine of, let's say, 3x, what is that equivalent to? Well, according to this formula, it would be equivalent to 1 half the cosine of, now we take, this is the m and this is the n, so seven minus three. which is... 4x minus cosine, 4x, or no, cosine of 10x. 10x. It turns out 
that that's true. Now, now I want you to think about how that might be useful. Sure. Okay. Well, can you integrate? Could you integrate that? Yeah. Could you integrate that? Yeah. Could you integrate this? Yeah. Uh, this this is how you do it. <laughs> Okay, remember, there's no product rule for integration. In fact, if there's a product, you're either going to do, um, and by the way, notice none of these are like to powers. These aren't power, these are all power in one, okay? The, anytime we see product rule, you need to be thinking integration by parts, and integration by parts here isn't going to help you. So this is just another example of how to handle that. So I've got one final example, we'll be done. By the way, actually, you can probably do it right now based on what I just told you, and it's on this previous slide, and it's right here. Turns out that if I'm going to simplify the product of sine some number x times sine some other number x, I just take one half, parenthesis, the cosine of their difference uh, minus the cosine of their sum. In other words, what I'm saying here, first of all, you guys would agree that m is 5, and n is 3, right? So I'm telling you that this integral is going to be equal to, and I'll just go ahead and write it right in here, 1 half times the cosine of their difference. So that's going to be uh, 2. two. Right. You guys understand where, where that came from? Minus cosine. And then minus, and then, now I'm not going to put the extra set of parentheses in here. I'm going to go ahead and notice that this, this one half applies to both of these things, right? This extra set of parentheses there. I did that up here as well. I'm going to go ahead and just distribute that one half. And then this is going to be the cosine of 8x. So this was their difference. This was their sum. And in this case, you subtract. Oh, wrong way. Sorry. In this case, you subtract. In fact, let me erase all the stuff I did on this slide here. So their difference, their sum, subtract. If it's sine times cosine, it's their difference, it's their sum, but this one is plus, and it's also sines. Here, if it's cosine and cosine, it's their difference, it's their sum. Cos in fact, you'll notice that there's connection there. Anyways, it's very close. It's just the one's positive and one's negative. Let's go ahead and finish this guy out now. Okay, so, um, oh, so here's the thing. Now, now let me... Back a bunch. There we go. Can I write? Yes. Okay. Hey, gone. It's gone so well. Yeah. Try now, maybe. Yay. Okay. So this is going to be one half integral cosine two x dx. Oh, I guess I should put dx up here. Minus one half integral cosine a x dx. And now don't forget, when you do these, you still got to do u sub, right? You still got to remember that like u is equal to 2x, and therefore du would be equal to, well, it would be a half du equals dx, right? So that means my final answer here is going to be not one half, but one fourth. And by the way, what's the antiderivative of cosine? just sine, isn't it? It's just sine. Sine 2x. Now let's think about that, okay? Okay, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. So what's the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, same game here, except here the du is going to be, or the u is going to be 8x, so we're going to have to multiply this by 1 8, so it'll be 1 over 16 sine 8x and then plus c. Okay, so uh, I'm going to stop it there. And that was pretty long. <laughs>